Okay, this is part two of Psalms chapter one, verse four. I left off with the ungodly part because someone texted me and it popped up and I lost the video. So it says the ungodly are not so, but are like the chiefs, which the wind divides away. And it says ungodly opposite of godly. The end of both. And then number five says, number four says, make it his role of life and conduct. You know, he's he's pretty much just kind of like basically giving you the, I don't know, I don't know the political term for it, but good and the bad. Just another word. Uh. Number five says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So, it says, therefore, the uh, ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. That means that if, you're, if you don't have God in you, you won't go to the gates of heaven. You won't be standing there. You won't have the opportunity for Jesus to look at you and say, I, I never knew you apart from here. You know, you're not going to have that. I didn't know that before. That was a really cool verse. I've never read Psalms. So everything I'm reading and I'm talking about is new to me. Uh, so... This is really cool. And this, nor will the sinners be in the congregation of the righteous. That means that you know how you have uh, the seat warmers, the pot planters, and the wannabe Christians inside of the congregations. Well, when it comes down to it, the righteous will be there. And the other ones will be weeded out. So God is on. He's on a garden trip in chapter 1 of Psalms. He's weeding the garden. He is going to pluck out all the ungodly. That's kind of cool how that worked out like that. Number 6 says, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, excuse me, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yet again, to stamp Stamp of approval. Woo God's letting you know that if you're not godly, then you're not going to get far in his world. You may go wherever you want to in the other world, but in his world, you're not going to get that far. Not until you accept him into your heart. Okay, so uh, chapter 1 in Psalms is only six verses. Let's see, how many verses is in chapter 2? You know what? Let's, let's go ahead and read on into chapter 2. It says, Why do the heated range and the people imagine a vain thing? Huh. The king of the earth sets them self and the rulers takes control together, counsel together against the Lord and against his amenity, saying, Let us break their bonds, assure and cast away their cords from us. Hmm. First, Miss Summer rejects of men. Moses' rejection of men. Okay. Maybe we'll end here. So I can read this to myself. Make sure I'm reading it right. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh the Lord shall have them in 
desires. Then shall he speak unto them, and his wealth and vex them in his sore display. These are some really big words. Lord, help me. Help me read. Help me. Help me understand the words that I'm reading, Father. Just, just support me. Help me do this, Father. It says, yet, ye, yet, yet have I said, set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the the decree the Lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee ask of me and I shall give to thee he for thy inheritance and thy unterred must part of the earth for thy passion thou shalt break them with a rod of iron thou shalt dash them in pieces like a pottery vase be wise now therefore O ye king be in Trust ye judge of the earth. Number 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Tumbling. Uh, read that. I, I don't know what that word was. 12. Kiss the son. Let his be angry and ye perish from the way when his wealth is kidding but a little blessed are all they that put their trust in him so chapter one chapter one pretty much pretty much just literally told you that if you're not holy and you're not right with God, then you're not going to get nowhere. I mean, he's just saving you the trouble. Why even bother reading the book if you're not going to live the life? If you're not going to have faith in God, then what are you doing? I mean, just the first chapter He's literally talking about death defying. The word death is ap applied to men in scripture, meaning scripture, or a cutting off of realization God proposes for which he was created. One can logically I'm a substitute the world scripture for death in every scripture where it is used it will clear clearly many passages to do so as we shall see below so you the first chapter is literally it's it's defying death you're defying death I, I understand that when you defy death, you chose God. Because, you know, we were already born into this world. But we're not truly saved until we accept Christ. And when we accept Christ, we die to, you know, to sin. And I, I totally, I think that chapter 1 is talking about dying to your sins. And, you know understanding that you know death separate from life is like that tree that is so cool i hope you enjoyed this may god bless you